Uh, prosecutors in the United States have moved to seize a 200-foot yacht and a condominium in Manhattan, which were allegedly a part of a bribery scheme involving Nigeria's former Petroleum Minister Diazani, Alison Madweke. The reports say assets which were acquired by two Nigerian businessmen, Kolawole Aluku and Olajide Omokori, uh, worth $144 million. That is about $50 billion naira. Dezani had allegedly given oil production contracts to the men while she was minister. Uh, she awarded Aluku and Omokure's unqualified companies multiple strategy alliance agreement, also known as SAAs, with NNPC subsidiary, which received more than $1.5 billion in revenue uh, through crude oil sale. Now, in appreciation, the men allegedly acquired four residential properties in and around London with worth 11.45 million pounds to cater to Dizani Alison Madweke's lifestyle and that of her family while acquiring for themselves an 82 million dollar Galactica, Galactica <laughs> star vessel regarded as the world's largest fast uh, displacement yacht. Now, the $87 million uh, condominium uh, units in, in, in Man Manhattan and several other luxury apartments. Meanwhile, acting Assistant Attorney General uh, Kenneth Blanco, who ruled over the case, says that the U.S. will seek to forfeit and return illicit funds to the victims from whom they were stolen if the monies are within the reach of the United States. Of course, Alison Madweke is currently facing charges of money laundering. And 19 banks are also moving to seize assets belonging to businessmen Olajide Omokore and Kola Wolealuko. The assets are to be held until the court decides the fate of a suit seeking the recovery of $1.7 billion, both men and their oil firms owe the federal government. Now, the federal government has asked the court to restrain the two from giving instructions and receiving payment from the 19 banks in Nigeria, eight outside the country and eight other companies. Companies linked to the two lifted uh, Nigerian crude under government's strategic alliance agreement when Alison Madweke was uh, minister. Well, joining the conversation, well, of course, you can join the conversation and tweet at us at TVC Breakfast. Uh, but right now, we have a lawyer, Moyo Shore Onigbanjo, in the studio with us. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. He's also a senior advocate of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's good to have you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Now, this figure, $144 million. Uh, some might even say, look, this money is really too small for us to be, you know, talking about the, the condo and the uh, multi-million dollar yacht. But do you think what the U.S. has here is a smoking gun situation where they really know they can nail this gentleman and, of course, uh, the former minister? Well, if, if, you, if, you, if you know the U.S. authorities very well, they don't um, play around with things such as this. Mm -hmm. They don't, um, they're not usually prone to frivolities. And before they present an indictment to a grand jury, they must have done their homework. They must have had all the facts. Mm -hmm. They must have the evidence. And what they're seeking is to formalize those investigations to make them crystallize into an actual indictment in a court. At, at this stage that they are, at, that they are they're mm -hmm. just preliminaries. They go before a grand jury. The grand jury will look at the evidence that they have and decide whether there is a probable cause to proceed to arraign the sus suspected criminals. In this case, um, Omokori and Aluko. When the grand jury delivers its verdict, then the prosecutors will now formally charge them and their companies for money laundering. Hmm. All right, now we, one was expecting that this should have come quite earlier than this. But in the minds of so many Nigerians who have been analyzing and following this thing, they're asking, why now? Why, why did it take so long for the U.S. to come up with all of this? Well, you know, investigation takes time. Gathering evidence takes time. And if, if you don't want to present a shoddy case that will be thrown out, because the grand jury can indeed 
refuse to, to say that there is a probable cause, and that will be the end of the matter. So in order, I believe, to present an iron cast case against the suspects, they would have to take their time, dot their, their I's, cross their T's, so that when they go before the grand jury, they will not be faulted. So I, 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 I do, you know, sometimes um, when, you, when, you want, when you ask for so much speed, you might, in, the, in that haste, lose the substance of what you're chasing. So I'm, I, I think they're perfectly in order. What should concern and worry us is that on this side of the Atlantic, we are slower to bring these people to book, slower to bring them to justice. For example, there is, in, in Nigeria, I'm not aware of any indictment against Desiani. It's interesting you, you touch on that. Uh, even beyond being worried that we're slow in this part of the world uh, with actually uh, carrying out this prosecution, uh, while the, the U.S. move by, you know, the U.S. Department of Justice, the DOJ move to actually uh, come up with the recovery and forfeiture of this uh, looted, allegedly looted uh, funds and proceeds of corruption, Nigeria, on the other hand, is talking about amnesty for uh, corrupt uh, you know, politically exposed uh, officials, what a contradiction. What yeah. does that really say about our readiness to fight corruption uh, to a standstill? It, 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 it says a lot. It speaks volumes. I mean, it, it, it shows that really we just uh, mount this fight against corruption. We don't, our, our, our officials, our government, they don't really mean it. They don't follow through. The willpower is not there. It's as if the system is designed to short circuit itself. Because if you, if you even look at our recent history, we've had to really outsource some of our real criminal prosecutions mm -hmm. to foreign jurisdictions. Ibori, for example, was, 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 was his matter was sent to jail mm -hmm. in the UK. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, a court dismissed all the, um, th I think, about 140-something mm -hmm. count charge against him. Mm -hmm. But on these same charges, the same allegations, when he was charged in the UK, he pleaded guilty and he went to jail. But, you know, in, in, in Nigeria, because of uh, a cocktail of so many events, we, we, we don't make progress. It's either a shoddy investigation or the prosecution doesn't do his job very well, or the judiciary also doesn't do his job well, or some of my colleagues, you know, also do mm. their best to ensure that the cases do not make progress. So that's why I said it's a cocktail of events that prevents Nigeria from really getting to grips with this monster called corruption. Let me ask you this personally to you. When, when this news broke and we, it was awash on the papers and media and all of that, what, what really came, what was the first thing that came to your mind when it comes, because this is not the first time we're having this kind of cross international or cross country issues. We remember the Halliburton issues, mm -hmm. cases and all of that. What, what really came to your mind on this? To tell you the truth, um, I was um, mixed emotions. Sad again that we have failed in our own jurisdiction. And glad on the other hand that, well, you know, if you can manipulate the system in Nigeria, thank God that it's not the same in other jurisdictions. So that this proceeds need to be, and I, and, and, and I must say this, that in, 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 in the developed world, the reason why corruption, it's not, it's not like they, are no, they don't have corruption tendencies, yeah. but they know that it is, the chances of getting away with it is almost zero out of 100%. The moment there are evidence. Yes, because so people will not do it because you know you will be caught. It's like if you travel abroad and you drive against traffic, like we do normally in Nigeria, you're going to be caught. You're going to, be, mm -hmm. you're going to face court, or you'll be fined, and you'll pay. 
So what does that say, in essence, as to uh, the, the way, how permissive the Nigerian society is uh, to uh, corruption? Uh, th that aside, now this discovery was a result of painstaking investigation and collaboration between the, the U.S. Department of Justice and other you know, international uh, organizations and all of that. Bring it to Nigeria. The EFCC is the only agency, really, apart from the ICPC that is saddled with the responsibility of interrogating and prosecuting corruption cases. This standalone system that is being run, how effectively can you know, we achieve this anti-corruption war if it's left to the EFCC alone? Even in this case, the EFCC is, uh, is going to be a witness in London and, and the US. Yeah. The, 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 you, you've said, you've said it, the appropriate thing. The EFCC is obviously overwhelmed. They cannot cope with the barrage of corruption cases springing up on a daily basis. Mm. You have the minor cases of people defrauding banks for little amounts. Then you have the gigantic cases of gov public officials taking liberty with public funds. So they are overwhelmed. But, you know, in, in, and then they are also underfunded, obviously understaffed mm. so many things prevent them from really attaining their full potential mm. because as you said in all this corruption matters where is the nigerian police where is the nigerian police that's supposed to be the first line of resistance to corruption but when have they last really brought out mm. an a, a, a case against anybody on this corruption matters. Mm. Okay, L let me put you on hold uh, uh, and bring in Fola Dili now to give us a perspective on social media, how people are reacting to this issue. Mm -hmm. I know the, the social media would have or could have gone a buzz, be on fire, with, actually, be on fire with this issue. <laughs> they have gone crazy over this one. Mm. Good morning, um, Sunia. Good Aki. morning. All right, so let's get into the tweet. Sarah Musa says, Dezani is like a bacha. Several years down the line, Nigeria will receive money from different parts of her loot. Today, $140 million seized in the U.S. Simbo Gunjimi says, my own grouse is what does she or they want to do with all this loot? Shereke Benga says, Dezani tried to copy a bacha but wrongly pasted the loot selfishness. So it was copy and paste, but the paste wasn't done well, according to Benga. Oyema Charles says, Dezani is nothing like a bacha. She is worse than the man. Her own matter weak me. Red Rum Lukaku says, I don't have a problem with the U.S. prosecutors seizing Dezani Aluko stolen wealth, but they must return the wealth back to Nigeria. Uzebu Prosper says, Dezani Alisi um, says, um, says rather, has now been indicted for corruption in the U.S. and U.K. Over $200 million to her name alone all happened under good luck, Jonathan. And mm. someone said, Chris Obani says, that didn't affect our three square meal then, as we can't even have one today. Mm. Yeah. So, senior advocate, my question is this. Let's dwell on these last two tweets for a minute. So, someone is saying, look, all this corruption and loot happened under, um, you know, the former president, good luck, Jonathan. And this person is saying, look, that was fine, because we could even have three square, um, a three square, um, three meals a day, but now we can't even have we can barely have one. Do you think that Nigerians don't even actually care about the fight for corruption or the fight against corruption that this current administration is focusing on? Mm. Do you think that they only just, look, I just need to eat. I don't care about whoever is corrupt that you're trying to go after. Let, just make sure that we're eating three times a day. Do you think that's fair to say? They, they, they're making a mistake and they, they're lacking the historical perspective. Because what happens today determines tomorrow. Okay, okay. So if we have bad governance today, the effect might not be immediate, but down the line you're going to see the effects because there's going to be a lot of shortfall in funding of public services. The, 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 the economy is bleeding. So, I mean, you know, it's like somebody who's ill and he doesn't treat it immediately, you'll be able to get on, move along. But eventually, that, that illness, if you don't treat it at that particular time, will eventually paralyze you. And that is what mm. we have today. Mm. We are paying the price 
for the past bad governance we've had over the years, not just good luck, Jonathan, but over the years, successes, governments, looking the other way with corruption and so many other things. Mm. Yeah. All right, Fola, thank you thank very you much. So much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you All right. Now, the, in, in the exception of... Uh, President Buhari's administration. One of his first trips was to go to U.S. and we heard from some of the discussions was for the U.S. and the West to try to repatriate some of the monies and all of that. We haven't heard a lot of those monies being repatriated until now. What, how hopeful are you that even after seizing all of this, the monies will be returned to Nigeria? Mm -hmm. That's another problem that the international community, which they have, they like to accuse countries like Nigeria and many third world countries of being um, corrupt and what have you. But they themselves, in the first place, they provide the avenue for these stolen funds to be brought into their economy. And then they make it very difficult for these funds to be repatriated. And, you know, that was why when um, the UK Prime Minister then made a slip of the tongue and, <laughs> uh, and, and, and said Nigeria was a, a, a very corrupt country. Fantastically and, corrupt. Uh, yes, fantastically corrupt. And, and the social media was a buzz that he should apologize. And Buhari appropriately responded and said, I don't want an apology. Just mm -hmm. give me back exactly. my funds. Mm -hmm. Send back mm -hmm. our funds. You know, give me back our funds. So they themselves are lacking in that willpower to speedily repatriate stolen funds, and to, it, it's not even a case of, you know, let the funds come in, then we, we return it. Don't even let it come in at mm. all. So what do you make of the statement that the U.S. is not a safe haven for the proceeds of corruption, according to the acting Attorney General Blanco there in the U.S.? Uh, is it only true on paper, in reality, based on what you just said? Well, I mean, you know, they, they're taking their time. They take their time about it mm -hmm. to repatriate the funds. I believe that, you know, once those funds are located, because you, you'll be surprised that sometimes you're reading the news media and then it says that Sweden or some European country or Liechtenstein are to refund X million dollars of Abacha loot. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering, Abacha loot, after how many years yeah. you're still keeping on to the funds? Mm -hmm. So... They, 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 they must expedite return of these funds. And I believe also, once these funds, like the funds that have been located now, I believe once they're located and they're going to be returned, don't return to us the exact amount. Mm -hmm. You must return it with some with interest. With interest. Yes, you must That's another twist. <laughs> with, 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 with some interest. Because these cases invariably might go on for a year or two appeals and what have you. So why, why are you re returning to us the exact amount many years down the mm. line? I, I, I think In addition to that, there's yes. a phrase that I, uh, is a bit worrying. Where appropriate the monies will be refunded. refunded. That yeah. means there are no guarantees that uh, we can actually have all of this um, stolen funds. The, the, the irony is that the developed world fights to return these funds. Mm -hmm. The funds, when they are re returned, are also subject to being relooted. Mm. So wow. that, it that's, goes on and on. That's a hard punch. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a big one. All right. Uh, Moyoshiri Onigbanjo, senior advocate of Nigeria. How, did I pronounce that name right? Moyoshiri. Moyoshiri. Onigbanjo. Onigbanjo. <laughs> I give you I a think, pass, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to get to my Yoruba classes to get everything right, but it's, it's nice to have you on the show. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.